Welcome to Talked Up. I am your host, Charlie Peters, and you are listening to CyberStationUSA.com. Today we have quite a show, folks. Usually I am lying, but today is no joke. This will be Talked Up's maiden voyage into the hour-long show variety. But much like Amelia Earhart's first attempt at circumnavigating the globe, there's a good chance we're not going to return to the hour-long show. Uh, We're going to instead keep it at a clear and concise 30 minutes. This week's overload is actually due to the high quality and quantity of guests on the program. Our musical artist of the week is Strict Nine out of Massachusetts. They'll close things out. We'll also be talking to Melora Harden from the movie Knucklehead. You know her from her time on NBC's The Office as the breast-augmented Jan Levinson Gold. Later on, we'll also be hearing from Mark Pellegrino. He, of course, plays Jacob on Lost, which premiered season six on Tuesday night. We'll try and make sense of what happened there. But first and foremost, our first guest is a well-known titan in the business industry after creating the fashion line FUBU. Well, Mark, I want to thank you for coming on the show. We can uh, we can catch you on Lost, right? ABC's Tuesday, 9-8 yep. Central as Jacob, and also nice on show. Supernatural Thursdays, 9-8 Central on CW. A man of many talents, Mark Pellegrino. Thanks for calling in. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you. All right. Those were our interviews today. But we have to get to our musical artist of the week. We have Strict Nine in studio. Welcome, gentlemen. How's it going, man? It's going excellently. Why don't you introduce yourselves to the fans? Well, we are a couple members of the band Strict Nine, experimental metal from Boston. Uh, my name is Maddie Cologne. I am the lead vocalist in uh, Latin percussion. I'm Jeremy Kaplan. Um, I do backup vocals, uh, samples, and, uh, and lights. All right, and we also have the... Uh, the manager doing the manager thing, going off yeah, mic. Yeah, he is. Hello, all. I'm there Chris. He is. I kind of do all the back, back like stage shit. So. He is the man. He, don't let him fool you. He does a hell of a lot for this band. All right. And um, how long uh, have you guys been together, Strict Nine? Well, we actually, the band, like Strict Nine, was actually formed in uh, 2000, um, back when we were kids. Um, all the members uh, here today were not here, but uh, I was in it. Um, the guitar player was in it. Um, our manager is uh, is uh, was always around us. You know, at the time he wasn't our manager at the time. Just recently became, but uh, he's been kind of around us for a long time, friends, and um, and yeah, we've been around for a while now. And you guys are out of the uh, Mansfield, Attleboro area. Yeah, south, uh, southeast. Yeah, for know, our global short. audience, we got people all over the world. They might not know where Mansfield is. That's a suburb of Boston, I guess you'd say. And yeah. It's about 25 minutes out of the city. I'm not sure how far you can go and actually still be a suburb. I'm not yeah. sure, like, <laughs> you know, can Providence be it? I don't know how far it goes. I guess you would say, you know, but, if you know uh, where the Patriots play, yeah. right by there. Mm-hmm. Uh, right outside uh, Foxborough. That, uh, and Mansfield is, is one of these towns that kind of looks like an American postcard. You know what I mean? Greeting, yeah. Greetings from America. Yeah. Uh, it's got the uh, it's Hans got the big the big big Victorian houses, the nice schools, the pretty manicured lawns, big happy American families. Basically, the reason the terrorists hate us mm-hmm. is uh, Mansfield. Absolutely. Um, so it seems pretty conservative to me, Mansfield. That area. How receptive were they to uh, a hard rock group like yourself on when you guys were starting out? They hated it. Yeah, hated it. Mm-hmm. Just uh, you know, um, at the time when we first started, at least it was uh, Blink One Eighty Two, pop punk. Uh, that was what was accepted um, at the time, which is nothing what we sound like now, but we were into the, you know, I guess you would say the new metal scene, um, you know, the uh, Slipknots and uh, bands like that, you yeah, know, Corn. Uh... that was kind of when we were, but um, we never wrote music like that um, and, you know, just begun to evolve over the years and mm-hmm. now we're just not even what we once were, we're completely new. I mean, this this stuff we're hearing is good, but it's hard. Like, it's it's a little intense, you know. You guys seem like nice enough gentlemen, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, w- what happened to you as children? I mean, where is this all coming <laughs> from? Where is this? Uh, it's all, I don't want to say animosity, but let's go with intensity. Well, um, you know, as far as I mean, as far as lyrically, um, a lot of it comes from uh, you know the media, and uh, you know. Well, thank and, you very and, much. And uh, yes. Uh, bastard <laughs> <laughs> um you know i guess more uh perception of people like us and uh you know just kids with long hair and stuff like that but uh more you know especially these days like, politics come into play and you know uh stuff like that and it you know you start to change your priorities instead mm-hmm. of just you know crying you know the average the average band talking about you know just uh breaking up with their girlfriend but uh 
we try to talk about things that matter, you know. Uh, and speaking of long hair, I got to get to this. I had to do it eventually. Uh, you guys got the rocker look. Jeremy has, uh, first of all, he got, he's got like the brawny paper towel guy face <laughs> with, um, with a nearly ZZ Top-ish beard. And he's it's, got the... Uh, He's got the Venus Williams uh, colored uh, dreads going on down past it's the shoulder. It's, it's it's an intense sexy. look. I'm rather turned on. Oh, yeah. All right. Enough of the chit-chat. Let's Man play a love. song. We want to uh, introduce this first track for us? Sure. Uh, this first, this is uh, one of the uh, you know beginning tracks on the record. This is uh, called Yet to Come. All right. Here it is from Strict 9. Excellent work there. That was yet to come. We are in studio with Strict Nine. You can find their music at Strict Nine Music dot com. And uh, gentlemen, you guys are uh, quickly blowing up the uh, music ladder here. I'm not yeah. sure if that's the correct phrase, but you so. guys are moving up anyway <laughs> and uh, leaving <laughs> people in your dust. Now, uh, this is not a MySpace band. These guys are legitimate. They're playing big shows. They uh, they're selling merchandise, which is uh, delightful. Valentine's Day is around the corner mm-hmm. for all you. Uh, uh, ladies looking for something special, forget roses. A little, maybe a nice little hoodie or something, huh? Booty shorts. Booty shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Baby dolls. Um, like now, uh, I don't want to blow smoke up your rear necessarily, but Music Vagabond is a well-respected voice in this industry, and they named Strict Nine as a top ten unsigned band to watch for in 2010. Yep. Right. What does that kind of uh, that kind of honor mean to you guys? Um, you know, it's it's something that we've really been working for for a while it's like we don't do this just as a hobby we you know we do this because this is you know what we want to do um 
you know, so the, the, the fact that we were actually kind of called out, um, you know, being one of the unsigned bands that, you know, people should really watch out for is, is pretty amazing, you know, for all of us. We were pretty excited about it. Yeah, and we weren't just, you know, it, we weren't just named, you know, top ten unsigned band. It was unsigned musical act and not just metal act, but of all music in so, the country. So anything, any kind of genre, it's... Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know. And how, did they, how did they get in touch with your uh, music? Do you know? Was it the uh, excellent I, work of your manager over yeah, here? I think it was. This mm-hmm. guy right here, over here, is. It, I, I don't know for sure. Um, he just told me one day, and I was extremely excited, and, you know, I was hoping, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know. I Great. Well, uh, speaking of blowing up, let's uh, let's hear this next track. I, first, before we start the music, though, <laughs> I, I want to note the track you're about to hear from Strict Nine is called Cinnaburn, yeah. and I'm assuming this was written as a jingle for the popular uh, pretzel company in the mall. Mm, I wish it was. And what's the deal? <laughs> what's the deal with this song as we lead into it? Well, uh, let's just say uh, one of our band members uh, likes the sauce when he likes to. Uh, what he likes to rehearse. Mm, I see. Um, we, this song is a very in-depth <laughs> song, uh, lyrically, uh, probably one of the most in-depth and powerful um, songs, lyrically, politically, um, in the past you know, eight years, kind of what, what's been happening. It's a song we always end with. Um, and I didn't have a name for it. I couldn't f- think of one that suited it. And uh, we usually, when we write songs part by part, we'll name it after something else. This one just happened to be candy-themed. Um, you know, one part would be called, you know, Fruit by the Foot or whatever. But uh, our uh, our keyboard player got drunk one night, and uh, he yelled out Cinnaburn because he was so drunk. He was trying to say Cinnaburst, but uh, out came Cinnaburn. There was a lot of laughter, and this is what you get. All right, well, here it is, Cinnaburn. <laughs> 